I just wanted to draw your attention to the fact that our meetings have uh, a code of conduct. You can find it on the DCC website. I've just um, shared the link in the document with you. Um, I don't expect, we weren't expecting any <laughs> the meeting to go um, uh, anything other than professional, but just wanted to draw your attention to it. Um, just saying all communication should be appropriate and professional to a professional audience and, and inclusive, accommodating, appreciative. Watch out for turn taking. Um, if for any reason um, you don't feel welcome um, uh, and you made not to feel welcome at this meeting, um, report issues to uh, Magdalena or me. Um, if you don't feel comfortable reporting them to uh, two people who are present at the meeting. Um, there's also uh, Thordis, who is in charge overall of um, code of conduct and uh, uh, reports for this kind of uh, issues. Um, you find contacts in the um, code of conduct uh, page. Okay. Magdalena. Thank you, Diana. So I was just copying and pasting. Uh, I don't know whether everyone can see the document. Maybe some people who joined a little bit later after we started. I don't know whether everyone can see the chat, uh, but Diana just um, um, okay. notes with you at the beginning and maybe we can just reshare the... Here's the code of conduct coming up in the chat uh, at the bottom. Um, at the, if you scroll over the window, uh, the Zoom window, uh, you will see uh, at the bottom a bar, which includes a button called chat. Um, I think most of you have used Zoom, so. Um, but let us know if you want, uh, if you're having trouble trouble accessing it. Okay. okay, brilliant. Thank you, Diana. So the goal of today's call is to learn about uh, usage dashboard. Um, as many of you will already know, on Friday we did a major Rails five upgrade. And with that, uh, we were finally able to deploy some of the also usage dashboard updates, uh, which we'll be discussing today, and also just some basic about how to read the statistics. So um, I'll just let Tiana to take over. Okay, so I've we first we would first like to know about your um, experience of using the usage dashboard. Um, Maybe you can tell us um, what do you use it for? Which features do you mostly use? Um, is anybody happy to start sharing? Or maybe some of you are actually not using this at all. Um, and it would be interesting to find out reasons why not. Do you want me to share the screen um, for the usage dashboard? I, I can share my screen because I'll be... Okay. Yeah, it's probably easier if you do. Let me just. I don't want to pick on anybody, but uh, maybe drop a shy comment in the in the chat box. Okay. Is the usage dashboard um, useful at all to you? Well, if no one has anything to add to this, we we can just leave it there, and maybe maybe there will be questions as we go um, about the demo, maybe there'll be further comments about the changes and upgrades, and hopefully they'll start some discussion if there are any points you would like to share with us. Um, so I'll, I'll just start with the short demo today. So review usage. So this, just to start, review usage can be only used if you are having administrator privileges for DMP online. So if you don't have these, please email us to dmponline at dcc.ac.uk so you will be able to have a look at these. But hopefully, majority of you will have um, this um, allowed uh, for themselves. So once you're granted admin privileges, you will see additional menu, which are several items allowing you to also review usage. So there are a few ways how you can review usage and how your users can interact with DMP online. You can do this through accessing the following. You can review usage by looking at plans. Another way is to looking at usage. And today, just before the session, I was thinking also, we just added actually Google Analytics, but that would require a session on its own. So I won't be covering Google Analytics today. So let's start with the plans. Select plans from the admin menu. 
and you will be able to see this page. Once you are here, um, you are able to download plans. And oh, I can't see my download, unfortunately, for some reason, um, as my bottom of the Zoom call is there. So I'll try to open. OK, let me just move this. Apologies, I'm trying to move the window around uh, with the Zoom call participants. I hope, can you, can you see the Excel spreadsheet? I think oh, you'll yeah. have to have it in another tab oh, I think instead you have of it. another window. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it's not really crucial for today's session, but I just wanted to let you know you are able to download these plans and basically uh, the plans that you download are just the same as really the stable. Um, but, you know, instead of clicking through here, you, you can just have the Excel spreadsheet um, to go through. As many of you will know, although this is not really related to today's topic, um, in here, if um, you have request feedback allowed, you would be able to see the plans that requested the feedback here as well. And you are able also to click through to the plan itself and see the content. Um, another way how you can really review the usage, and I think and uh, really what's the center um, of today's uh, session, is looking at the usage statistics. So again, just click on the admin menu and select the usage. Um, and this is what we have upgraded with the latest Rails 5 release. So from the top of this page, uh, you can now see uh, the overall um, overview of your institution users and their plans. So I'm logging, being logged in logged in here um, for DMP online tutorials. So it's, you know, our demo organization. So my usage statistics reflect um, what I have here. So it's telling me here, I currently have 16 total users and there are seven plans um, all together. And we now edit uh, this exclude test plans. So when I click on this, I actually have zero total plans because majority of the plans are created by me and they are always test plans. So um, it has been requested in the user groups um, year um, around a year ago, and we we finally with this Rail Five upgrade managed to add this button. So hopefully this will help you to read the statistics um, a little bit better. Um, and also another way um, it has been requested um, to you know. Um, at various form uh, for um, fielding um, the separator. Um, so, you know, you can now choose comma. I, I don't remember what this is called in English and a hashtag. So um, whatever you need, um, you can just select the price. Pipe. Sorry, it's, called my it's called the pipe. Pipe, okay, thank you. So um, what you can see on this page are um, two, two different things. Um, first is the statistics on your users and another one statistics on your templates. We'll start with looking at statistics on your users. From this graph, you can see number of users who affiliated themselves with your organization over the past year and you can also see the number of plans in here um, they have filled and the breakdown of different templates they have used. So this is the third in here. You can also download the number of users who joined and number of plans they created over the past year. And, and the same applies uh, to the templates. And when the statistics on users um, has been also improved, because now when you hover with your mouse over, and I'm not sure how big this is, I'll try to zoom this in and hopefully you can see me zooming in. It actually shows you the number of users joining in specific month. So, for example, in June, it's showing me two. And then if I want to, I can just click on the specific month. So for example, April, and I can actually see 
who joins. So like I mentioned, this is used mainly for testing purposes. So my user is called test testing, but it might be that, you know, you have much more users joining in specific month and maybe if you are running specific courses, it might be useful just to see who joined when and maybe just target your users for, for your trainings. Um, you can also look into the plans. So again, you can hover with your mouse over and see more details. And again, this now works also as a click through. So again, if I click on the plans created in May, you'll be able to see all the plans that were created in May. So hopefully um, this will improve um, your interaction with, with the plans and users. Uh, now, number of plans by template. So this last graph in this section allows you to see number of plans created over the past year by your users choosing specific templates. So you don't need to necessarily see over the past 12 months, but that's the default view. You can choose also nine, six, three months or over the past month. And like I mentioned, you can also download these statistics. I think if I select anything less than 12 months here, I think it just goes blank for me. No, there is actually one plan. So I'll, I'll just leave it with 12 months. So it shows us a little bit more. And again, when you hover with your mouse over, you can see specifically which templates the users use. So, um, for example, in May, there was Horizon 2020, then BCC and University of Amsterdam, that says actually zero. So it was just Horizon 2020. Another good thing is if your users are using quite a few templates and you just want to look at specific template being used at specific month, you can click now here and these will remove the templates you actually don't want to be looking at. So again, this can just help you, like I mentioned before, if there is a specific template for which you just want to see the statistics, you can just remove these and analyze the specific template you are interested in. Now I'll move to statistics on your template. From this graph, you can see number of plans created based off your template, which could be used by other institutions too. This view was created for the funders as they wanted to know the statistics for their template, regardless affiliated institutions of their users. You can hover the mouse over the individual month for the breakdown. And like previously, again, you can remove if you have, you know, more templates again or customized templates just to see a specific one. So, um, like I mentioned, this is today uh, from my side, everything around the usage statistics, but I mentioned uh, before I wanted to add the Google Analytics 2 today. Uh, this has been now released as well, but it would require quite a lot of time to go through. So I believe it will be quite beneficial to have a session on Google Analytics um, some other time. I just wanted to show you very quickly where you can add the tracker. Oh, there we go. So now when you go into your organizational details, we have added this Google Analytics tracker. And if you follow the instructions, my colleagues have kindly put together on the wiki pages, you know, you'll be provided with a tracker code and you can just put it here. But I, I, I won't be really touching on this anymore because it would require quite a lot of time and um, it'll be much better to use this as a separate session in its own right. So I'll stop sharing here and um, we are open for... Uh, questions or if I'm mistaken, I think it might be Diana will just share um, what we are planning to actually work on in order to improve these. Okay, very quickly before we move on to questions, I've seen there are quite a few coming in the chat. <clears throat> um, okay, excuse me. Um, 
we are working on a few features that you have asked for um, and saving the users um, as a CSV download preference. And uh, we've we've allowed you three options to uh, use three different separators. People have asked for this. Um, Many of you have said that you would like to see more and more finely tuned statistics that uh, include for ad, uh, administrators at institutional level, they want to see uh, statistics by department. Um, others, um, super admins want to see statistics uh, by institution, more and more statistics by institution. Um, when um, when you've seen uh, Magdalena showing you um, how you can uh, see plans by uh, template people would want to actually um, click on the chart and be taken to those plans um, click through is possible for a number of users but not for everybody um, some of you may be aware and i know i don't think anybody in this group uh, apologies if i'm mistaken has taken part this summer in our usability testing um, we employed a student, a student uh, intern who uh, carried out a number of interviews and uh, usability tests, uh, and we also carried out an online survey. And uh, many of you approached us with a list of desires. When it comes to um, usability tests, and maybe Magdalena, since you're still sharing your screen, or do you want me to share my screen? I can share my screen to go back to the dashboard. Would you like me to, or are you sharing yours? I can. I'm going to share mine. Apologies, you're going to see yourselves for a moment and see if I can go back to. Um, okay, you're now seeing usability for University of Edinburgh <laughs> usage. Okay, so for example, uh, can you see the screen? Okay, do you want me to make it smaller? Is it is it okay as it is? Yeah, Magdana, maybe you can say if it's all right. It's fine. Yeah. OK, so people kind of like these vertical uh, bars and they're easy to interpret. But for example, they've said um, if you're a national level uh, service, you're going to get loads and loads of these. Um, if you see me hovering, um, it's, it's saying how many templates were produced for Wellcome Trust. Um, but people can't quite distinguish between colors, and they're not very user-friendly, particularly for colorblind people. Um, so um, they would like us to come up with a different system of um, showing numbers uh, per template. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I've made other notes. Um, Okay, super admins would like to see plans by institution, so they would like more filtering facilities there for these for these charts. Um, they would like to see, uh, for example, statistics for from a single funder. They would like to merge templates if they have several templates, customized templates for the same funder. Um, they would like to see the merge per funder rather than per template. Um, they would like to compare usage year by year, and I saw that somebody raised the issue of uh, being able to see. Uh, statistics from uh, you know earlier on uh, from previous years um, uh, post potentially in the long run uh, we could introduce um, um, different kinds of charts the name that escapes me at the moment that would show uh, evolution over the year uh, over the years and whether you know there is a gradual increase or decrease in, in plans um, Statistics for new numbers of organizations that have just joined the system and others for department depends what administrative level you are. Um, but we're being asked for more and more statistics and um, more and more ways of manipulating them. We are aware of this. We are aware these are useful. And in the long run, we hope um, to be able to introduce more and more. Um, these notes are for you, as we said, so I'm just going to press the return here and feel free to add them on. Um, I think the um, survey, no, I'm sure the survey form is still online. Um, I can put it in here if you want to, to fill in the survey again um, of what information you need. I'm going to add the link in a moment. Um, 
as as you know, uh, Sam, our lead developer, has left, um, so we're going to be a bit slower. Uh, but in the long run, we do keep an eye on these statistics because we know um, you find them useful and you want to use more and more of them. Um, Thank you. So I guess now we can move to Q&A and there are quite a few questions in the chat which I can copy and paste in here and we can provide answers to. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Diana, so much. Uh, hopefully you found it useful and uh, feel free to unmute yourself if you have any questions about what Diana um, has mentioned or me. There, like Diana mentioned, there were quite a few questions and comments. Um, so difficult. <laughs> I, I tried to answer them um, as Diana um, was doing her presentation. So there was a question whether we provide anything else than CSV or whether can individual plans be download, plans downloaded to Excel? Sorry. Um, so no, this is only, I said Excel spreadsheet, I actually meant CSV. Um, I, I don't know the reasoning for this, uh, but if there is appetite for, I don't know, Excel spreadsheet, it might be raised as a new um, new ticket. Um, I, I don't know uh, what would be the use case or reasoning, but if it just, you know. I, mean... uh, I, I guess I, I can keep coming in and that is, um, I guess the use of uh, CSVs is, is, is a lot easier to then in convert or import into a Excel um, file because if we export in an Excel format, then we are restricting to a, a specific type of Excel. Um, and then if people have different versions, installs and things like that can cause problems. So a CSV tends to be a bit more a neutral one that allows people to a lot easier uh, import into an Excel uh, of any kind and it just uh, makes it easier. Easy. But if it, we see that people are really uh, with a big need for that, um, I'm sure we can look into it. But I have to admit, we prefer to use uh, generic formats to export things than actually specifics. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Marta. There were other points actually raised. Some people tried to uh, remove the uh, was it test plans you are yep. um, and it was straight away showing you zero I you know by few of you now saying this I believe this might be just another bug from the Rails 5 upgrade so actually thank you very much for testing this uh, because if you didn't tell us it would be difficult for us um, to find out so we'll um, after the session raise it as a ticket and we'll look into this with our colleagues because there are a few bugs uh, we were aware of after the Rails 5 upgrade. So this might be just another, um, hopefully little thing to correct for you. Um, so we'll raise this and hopefully this will work. Um, can, I, can I quickly ask, sorry to interrupt Magdalena, for what period, when you, you're filtering out test plans, it's not possible to download from beyond, sorry. So you're filtering out test plans and you're trying to view plans over a period of one year, one month, what period, one year, and that happens, you get zero. Yes. Okay, just just clarifying, because that is definitely a mistake. In that case, it's a bug. So we have to, to raise that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, Diana. Uh, so we'll, we'll look into this. Um... And I think as we go on, if you feel comfortable, you can also unmute yourself rather than just me reading your comments, um, Beverly. Okay, or or Beverly, if you if you can unmute yourself, it's fine. Um, so Beverly just said we really need to track usage over a longer period. I don't mind about the graphs, but I like to be able to download the figures. Yeah, we we don't. I mean, we when we've done, um, in fact, we I mean, we did have more than a year's figures because we blogged about them, but we made our own graphs because we we lumped a lot of a lot of um, different templates in groups. So we wanted to do some further processing on them, but we'd we'd like to be able to get all of the figures down, um, you know, particular. I mean, ev everyone's had an interesting year this year and we all want going to want to to identify whether COVID was a, you know, was a major factor. 
and we that for for that reason you know next year we're going to be wanting to compare 2021 with 2020 with 2019 I think we're all going to be wanting to do that oh I understand okay that makes a sense I, I mm -hmm. just wasn't sure um mm -hmm. yeah, you wanted to say something as well Um, but that no, that that's a that's a valid point. So, um, if that's the case, we'll we'll definitely um raise a ticket for roadmap. I you know again, I'm not um institutional user of DMP online, so I I wouldn't know why you having used statistics for more than a year, uh, would be helpful. So, I'll I'll raise a ticket, but we we might then reach out um at some point uh, to all of you with the email just to ask about more details, um about what this should look like, and we don't necessarily need to cover it in this session, uh, but it'll be just quite useful to get then uh, your comments about what would you like to see or which type of graph you would like to see and um how much of a detail of granularity you know would it be which type of comparison it would be over the years so. We'll, we'll be reaching out to you um, because we'll need to add more specifics into this for the ticket. Um, just reading through the comments. Um, there is one from Chris. Yeah. Chris, would you like to unmute yourself? Hi there. No, I was just thinking you could maybe uh, say what you were mentioning in the chat. Ah, right. Sorry. Yeah. Um, sure. So um, I think that, uh, there's a couple of thoughts. One is around downloading beyond 12 months. And uh, the rationale for that is to try and pick up on, on trends, on usage of demand. You can often map, for example, a uh, particular fund template uh, to uh, which departments or faculties that you're working with. So uh, if you've got perhaps uh, very few um, uh, templates from a particular funder, then you might want to do a, a, a comms campaign uh, to, to try and encourage uh, further use in that area. Also, from a service perspective, um, I, one thing I've picked up just because I've been watching the last couple of years, um, I noticed that, uh, for example, January and February for us are, is, is an example of a month where there's a real high peak in the number of DMPs being created. And we see that feeding through into the requests that we get for uh, DMP feedback uh, for the service to review. So it helps us to manage our, uh, our staff availability um, Clearly, we, we need uh, to create more time to send feedback uh, during February than we might at another year. So it's about rejigging our uh, uh, our efforts. Um, mm -hmm. The last thought that I had was, uh, I think the statistics on your templates are really helpful. Uh, and it's nice to see the, um, uh, the, the bar charts. But I think maybe this is, was a point that uh, Bev already made, is it would be really good if those bar charts, if we could actually download the statistics, so we could then analyze them ourselves or, or provide an internal report. Uh, it seems at the moment that we just get that lovely graphic display, but we can't download. Um... Thank you, thank you, Chris, very much. So you you can what you can currently download are the number of users and plans yeah. and templates. But yeah, that's a that's a valid valid point. So I think uh, very kindly, my colleague Diana was actually writing notes um, as you were saying. So we will we'll raise a ticket about this again after the call. Um, it's again we we are always interested to know actually how you want this user statistics to work because it's you really who need them for various purposes um 
So uh, thank you very much for this feedback. It's it's much appreciated, and again, um, it just helps us to to improve. And um, so we'll look into this. I don't know whether anyone else has any any more questions or comments. Yeah, feel free, uh, Joachim, and then maybe. Yeah, can I ask you about something completely different uh, about? Um... The, I've seen that after the upgrade, you have uh, added a feature that you can download the JSON uh, plan as a JSON, not as an admin, I mean, um, also as a user. And when looking at this JSON output, uh, uh, it is not very comprehensive. And my thought, was that, uh, is this what we can expect from the uh, API version one output? Uh, then it, it is actually not better than, than the version zero output, which uh, takes all the questions uh, in your local templates. Uh, you can have that as part of your output. And since we've built our, our model to comply with the uh, RDA DMP common standard on, on that output, uh, I'm a bit worried about changing to, to a more uh, uh, less informative uh, out, JSON output from, from the DMPs. So that's just. Um, um, I, I I must admit um, I I just very quickly looked into what the JSON looks like and um, I'm not sure what it should look like. Um, I would need to take this unless Marta can comment on this. I would just need to take it um, and double check with my colleagues because. Um, you know, there is only so much uh, I know about the API and I would need to really double check how the JSON should be presented uh, when downloaded. I'm, you know, now from the top of my head, I'm unable really to compare um, how detailed or granular the JSON uh, download should be. Um, I'm happy to check, but I don't know whether Marta has. Any I'm afraid. I'm afraid I'm in the same situation. I haven't uh, seen the 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 new export. This was done as part of uh, our colleagues in uh, um, America and uh, Sam. So I haven't actually seen the output of a uh, um, of a uh, API. Um, but um, it's still something that we're, we're working on it anyway, because it's definitely one of the main key points that is going to be developed this year. Um, so there's a lot more coming within um, API functionality that we're going to be providing. Um, so soon enough, um, once we have everything in the website from the upgrade um, stable and happy, uh, in a way, we will make sure that there's a uh, in the wiki and all the information that you would need uh, working in order to to actually um, set up an API and know what's the output. And I'll make sure that we'll uh, set an example of what would look like. Um, so uh, we'll look into that if um, that's okay. But I'm afraid I, I can't give you a specific how it will look and how it was compared with the previous one. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, I mean, we already use the API. The fear is that it will be be worse. Uh, we were quite happy with the one that... So currently, uh, both of them are working. We're not yeah. stopping API. The version one, version zero is not going to stop um, for the time being. I think that was already mentioned by my colleague, uh, Ray. Um, we are releasing the... P, uh, version one, but there is still things that needs to be improved. And obviously we're always looking for the feedback. If there's something in the way that is designed, the, the, the actual output, the JSON is not what you would expect. Um, if you could then get in touch with us with an example of what was actually not compared, is worse per se mm -hmm. compared with the previous one, we would be able to then look into more detail. Uh, we're always looking for feedback, to be honest. Okay, thank you. Uh, Joachim, I see you've added some notes on, I think it was you uh, who added um, some notes on the on the document about what exactly has become poorer. Um, 
was it you who wrote that line? Um, yeah, it would be good because um, I've inserted an action there for us to go back and ask um, what's uh, about what's missing. You're happy with what you had before and you find this one poorer because it would be good to have the, the detail there so that we know exactly what we ask. Yeah? Joachim, you're muted. Thank you. Joachim, you're still muted if you're trying to speak. Uh, I can add that to the Google Doc afterwards, after, yeah, it will still be online, yeah, great. Yeah, thank you. Um, the, the Google Doc stays and you can actually see the previous sessions there as well. It's a, hopefully a living document unless someone comes and just decides to delete it all, uh, but uh, all the notes just stay there um, and it's a nice reference for us. So. Unless there are further questions, um, I think we can come slowly to closing. So um, feel free to share this document with others. Um, there will be recording after the session as well um, and, and the notes. Again, if you have any further points we didn't record, um, very well in the Google Doc, feel free to add your points just so we have something to go back to. We will add the answers into the doc and when I'll be sharing the recording afterwards with you on the JISC mailing list and um, the administrator mailing list, I'll, I'll add the tickets or answers into the email um, and into the document as well. Um, and if you are not following us um, on the social media, uh, do join us on Twitter, LinkedIn, and join our monthly newsletter and our mailing list. Hopefully all of you have the access uh, to this shared document again, so all the links are there. Um, I'm slowly putting together the DMP online demo session YouTube playlist as well. Uh, so if you missed the previous session, you can watch them in the, in the playlist there. And I also just wanted to invite you um, for next month. We agreed that the next DMP online demo session will be on the 24th of March. Uh, so exactly in a month time at half past 10 in the morning. And the session will be about guidance. Um, so it'll be interesting topic. Not sure how many of you are using it or maybe planning to use it. So hopefully you will find this useful. Um, there are the joining details in the document and um, I would like to say big thanks to all for joining us, uh, for your comments um, and for Diana to help me run the session, for Marta helping to answer a few of your questions. And we really hope to see you um, next month. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye. -bye. Bye.